All right, so for today's video, let's talk about the concept and the math, of course, behind uh, an inverse function, okay? Uh, so hopefully to keep this as simple as possible, I, I thought of an example that everybody should be able to understand. Um, even if the math got more complicated from here, at least from this first example, you could get the idea of what an inverse function was supposed to be, all right? Uh, now we can do some more bizarre sounding problem later, but at least if we can do this first thing, you, you'll understand what it's supposed to be about, okay? So here's, here's the difference between some original function, and by original I just mean that you have to start with something, and that's this first function, uh, versus the inverse of it, okay? So I want to make it look like, you know, these aren't just two random things, like, but there's some kind of comparison to make between the original versus the inverse, okay? So let's, uh, here's my example. Let's say there's this function that converts a measurement in feet to an equivalent measurement in inches. And I'll just give you that. Uh, you plug in x being the number of feet, and you do the math, and you get y, however many inches that's supposed to be, okay? And let's see how would that work. Sometimes, because all functions do is take an input and convert it to an output, sometimes I put them in a little box like that, just to, you know, make that point about it being obvious, all right? So let's say... In, suppose x is 0.5 feet, half of a foot. Uh, how many inches is half of a foot? Uh, think about it. I mean, before we even do the math, how many inches is half of a foot? It should be 6, but, I mean, what if you put 0 0.5 times 12? What would you get? You would get 6, okay? Uh, and that's correct. Uh, half of a foot is six inches it's just a matter of fact right so this formula does its job correctly now what do you think the inverse would be all the inverse would do is convert the other direction i mean if you can convert feet to inches shouldn't you be able to convert inches to feet it makes sense right so here i'm just telling you that the inverse of that one the function that works backwards converts, well, what does it say? Inches to feet. You plug in y, however many inches you want, and you convert that to x feet. Let's try it out. Let's see if it works. Suppose you put y to be 6 inches. Suppose you put it in this formula. Uh, what's 6 over 12? 6 over 12 is a half, or, I mean, if, if, you're, if you really don't believe me, uh, 6 over 12 is 0.5. Is that the number we would expect? 6 inches is 0 0.5. Uh, half of a foot, okay? All right, now, so that's basically all it is. You got some function. You got some input goes to some output. All the inverse would do is switch, okay? So just read this. It says, what's the difference between whatever original function you have and the inverse the difference between them is that the inputs and outputs are switched and you can see that i mean look uh, the output here was six inches and just just for the sake of comparison i i plug six into this one uh and so they're switched but the input over here was half of a foot and that was the output over there that's the, should, that's all, the only difference, all right? No matter what, no matter how hard the examples later seem, that's all the, the difference between the two of them is, okay? All right, now I hope that this is as down to earth right here as the idea of an inverse function could possibly be, all right? Okay, so hopefully there you got the concept. Uh, you can ask questions if, if you don't or ask for some other example if you need to, okay? Now, some, here's something more like what you see in the assignments, okay? Uh, questions will come up about that. Suppose you have, like, this one right here, and this is the original. 
Okay, so there's my original function. Uh, find the inverse of that, okay? So in other words, find this other function that would have its sole purpose be to switch the inputs and outputs, okay? Half a foot is six inches, and six inches is half a foot. All right, so something like that, but for this function. Well, here, here are the steps. Uh, I guess when we do math problems, we like there to be steps. And uh, so here they are. I, I mean, I guess if you wanted to do it some other way than this, you can. Wouldn't matter to me. Maybe somebody else is going to tell you some variation on this. But let's not argue about that. This is, this is basically what you do, no matter what anybody tells you. All right. So let's say, okay, here, I have this original function. I want to find the inverse. My steps go as follows. My first step, replace the function notation uh, by the symbol y, okay? And the reason we do that, really it just makes it a little easier to look at. We know that all that f of x does is stand in for the y. It makes some things, you might say, why do we mess with it? Well, it makes some things easier. Uh, but I don't want to get into that right now. All right, so see that? We're going to, we'll call it Y. Fine, okay. And the second step says to switch the X and the Y. So in here, where there was a Y, put an X, and where there is an X, put a Y. You switch them. Okay, so that means this would, I guess, have to become X equals Y to the third power minus 12. And can you sort of see the relevance of that step? Why you'd switch them? Well, they, I mean, what does the inverse function do? It just switches the inputs and outputs. I'll say it again, half a foot is six inches, but six inches is half, I guess it just depends which way you want to convert. All right. Okay, so we switched. And then the last step, solve for y. So... Uh, let's do this. Let's write our last step and say, okay, now our intention is to solve for y out of this equation that we had in the previous step. Solve for y. See that y right there? Can you somehow rearrange this equation so that the y is all by itself? That's what it's saying to do, okay? So I don't think that would be too bad, actually. If I want to solve for the y, if I want to transform this so that it says y equals whatever it is, then my first step would be to um, add 12 to both sides to cancel it. I'd be one step closer to getting the y by itself. So I'll get x plus 12 over here, and it'll leave me with a y to the third power. Uh, now, it's like you're almost there. It, all, it almost says just y. It's just it's got y a third power. What do you think you do with the third power to remove it? What do you think you do? Third power? Well, I mean, what's the, op the opposite, so to speak, of subtraction? What cancels subtraction? Addition. Now, what do you think the opposite or the canceling of the third power is? It's the third root. So we'll take the third root of both sides. That'll essentially solve you for the y. So I'm going to write it. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to write it from left to right. Uh, and so I get like so. Okay. Now that would be the inverse function. All right. Now because that's it, that's the inverse, we, we normally we give it a special label to say it's the inverse. Okay. So here was the original, okay, and the inverse, you're looking at it, all right, you're looking at it right there, but we'll give it a special label to distinguish it from this. We say F, and we write, I know that looks like a power, uh, it's not a power, you know, is math notation confusing, yes. All right, that's the way it is. Nobody's going to change that. That's not a power. All that does is say this is the inverse of that. See, that's an F and that's an F. All that negative one symbolizes is that it's the inverse. Okay, so the inverse function is 
that formula right there, third root of x plus 12. Okay, so that would really be our answer, okay? Uh, now, I, I, I just, you know, I got my answer. That would be it. I can't resist showing you that it actually works the way it's supposed to, okay? So how about this? I, I did all my math. I showed you the steps, and I showed you my final answer to find the inverse. Uh, I'm going to put over here, I'm going to say, uh, does it work? Because really, I mean, I don't care why you're taking the math class or who made you take it or whether you want to be taking it or not. Uh, if you're going to get anything out of it, you need to see that math it works the way it's supposed to. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the inverse or the original function. Okay. I'm going to put it right there. Yeah, that's the original. All right. And I'm going to compare it with the inverse. I'm going to put them side by side and I'm going to put them in these little input output boxes like I like to do where I like to do it like that because when I think of a function and all the math I've ever done when I think of a function I think of it as an input output terminal put something in get something out and I just what, what would make what would illustrate that this does work correctly can you think about that for a second and tell me what would illustrate that this is in fact working correctly uh, well I go back to this What's the difference between the original and the inverse is the inputs and outputs are switched. So I don't know. Let's, let's do this. Let's just pick some number that is easy to work with to prove that. So what's like a nice, easy number just for the sake of illustration? How about zero? You know, if I was teaching a class right now, somebody would say, Why, where'd you get the zero? Where'd zero come from? It's, I'm just trying to illustrate that it works the right way. Was zeros as good as any other number, but you know zeros easier to work with than twelve point seven. So I'm just going to use zero just to show you that it works the right way. Now, if in this function you put zero in, what do you get out? Well, you put zero for the x, zero third power is zero, take away twelve, and so the output is negative twelve. So, as a matter of fact, the way the original function works is that if you happen to put 0 in, then you will get negative 12 back out. And what would have to happen for this one to be correct? Uh, wouldn't it have to be that if I put that number as the input, I would get this number as the output? Yeah, so the inverse just going to switch the inputs and outputs. Does it, though? If it, if it doesn't do it, I must have made a mistake somewhere. All right, so let's see. Uh, say you put negative 12 in here. What's negative 12 plus 12? Zero. What's third root of zero? It's zero. Okay, so the output is zero. And that's like, that's an illustration that it works the right way. Okay, what do I say the difference would be? The inputs and outputs are switched. Okay, now I know I probably said it enough. Uh, but it's like saying half of a foot is six inches or six inches is half of a foot. However you wanted to say it. It's like that. Now, in with the assignment that has inverse functions, and there's one last thing uh, about if you were to graph a function and its inverse together. Okay, so here I, I take something kind of like the last problem, not... Not exactly the same, but close enough for the sake of illustration. So say we get to the problem on the assignment. It says, can you graph this, the original function, and what's that negative 1 mean? The inverse. Can you graph them together? Now, I, I guess how you graph it, I don't know. You could say the graph of that is the graph of x to the third power shifted down one space, if you want to do that. But I guess, like, uh, it's not against the law to make a table. I mean, if you don't know how to what a graph is, you could make a table 
and you see if there's a pattern. So that's the way I'm going to do it right now. So here I, I chose a table. I just scattered my numbers. I got some negatives. I got zero. I got some positives. If I do made these points and it didn't look like anything, I might choose more or I might double check my math, but that's probably good enough. So let's say I made that table. You can check my math if you want to. And I put the points uh, on my, my graph. That's what they look like. Do those look like totally random points? As if I just dropped my pencil on the paper randomly? Or is there a pattern? So I, I do see a pattern. Uh, I will draw it the best I can. Okay, so that's the pattern I see. All right. Okay. That is, in other words, uh, f of x is x to the third power minus 1. So what you're going to get if you plot those points. Now, suppose the question says to graph them together. All right. Well, I guess I could make a table for the inverse. But, you know, do I have to start from scratch and, like, do the math all over again? Or could I just take uh, the fact that the inverse function just switches the inputs and outputs. So what was x becomes y, and what was y becomes x. Wouldn't that be an easier way to do it? Let's just do like that. So instead of having this point, it's going to have this point. Instead of having this point, it's going to switch the x's and y's, so I have that one. And it will likewise have this one. I mean, I'll, remember I told you I made the illustration that it's just going to switch the inputs and outputs. So you have this one, and have this one. Okay. All right. Let's plot those points. So where's the point? Negative nine, negative two. Left nine, down two. Roughly there. Negative two, negative one. Left one. Sorry. Left two, down one is here. Negative 1, 0 is here. 0, 1 is here. 7, 2 is here. Okay. Now again, it shouldn't be that those look like completely random dots. Uh, you know, there's a curve of some kind that goes through those points, and here's what it would be. Okay. Okay, all right, so there, there's, you know, for me drawing it freehand, I guess that's a fairly nice picture of what this would look like, okay? Now, so I have them both on paper. Uh, there's one last thing for us to notice, and all this last thing is, is a consequence of the fact that the inverse just switches the x's and y's point for point from the original. Because of that, no matter what problem you do, if I were to make a line here that was like a 45 degree angle, like right there, say that's 45 degrees. Uh, in other words, it's going to be the line y is equal to x. Okay, so I drew this in red. You know, I'm, I, it's just here for reference, so I'm drawing it like as a dashed line. These two graphs, the original and the inverse, will always be mirror images of each other along that line. And you can see that from my picture. Just drawing it freehand and actually trying to draw it kind of fast, I, I like to see like a mirror image right across that line. What I see over here is a reflection of what I see over there. Well, that's always true if you took any function and graphed it together with its inverse. So you could do it like that. I mean, plot some points, that's the original, switch them, that's the inverse, and you would expect symmetry along that, all right? So let's say if, at least for functions versus inverse, uh, that right there will always be the line of symmetry every single time. Okay, so there's our lesson on 
well, it's a, a quick lesson, but that's the lesson on inverse functions. I hope, you know, even though we worked up to this more complicated problem, uh, this you saw you see the relevance of this first one of just converting one measurement to another. Anyway, so from here, same thing applies as always. Do the My Math Lab assignment. Uh, ask questions. You can make more videos. Uh, all you got to do is ask.